random implies no predictability. It implies no order. It's actually a teaching of evolution where we evolved over time without any intelligent designer. You know, we came from apes and humans, I mean, apes into humans, and, and it implies that there is no purpose. Again, there's no divine being that's guiding the events of our world behind the scenes. It's just all random. And to that I say, hogwash. <laughs> there is no such thing as random. Believe it or not, there is no such thing. Because of the word entropy, there's no such thing as random. The ancient religions all believed in gods. All of them. They, they all had, you know, demonic gods. But they all believed in gods. The biggest slap in God's face is that we don't even believe. We're just all caught up in man's will today out in the world. We're all caught up in, you know, I'm my own God. I can make my own destiny. I don't have to listen to anybody. I don't need God. What do I need God for? I'm doing just fine. They choose to believe that events are random and they have no purpose and no meaning. And the world, the reason why they do this, the reason why they don't want to believe in God is because the world doesn't want to obey God. If you believe in God, you know that there's a responsibility that you have to obey him. People go on believing in random because they are insecure and scared of the truth. They have their own egocentric preconceptions, which is man's will, of what's going on. They look to scientific explanations to explain away God's messages. I just, I'm amazed at how people just explain away the Bible. What really gets me is when I see people talking about um, how the Bible came from Egyptian history. Ooh, that really gets me mad. <laughs> because God created first. And the devil takes what God creates. Do you know, I want to share something with you I learned. You've heard abracadabra? Did you know that that's actually Hebrew? Abra kadabra means God created everything out of nothing. Isn't that awesome? When you take a hat and you pull the rabbit out, there's nothing in that hat or whatever. That's creating something, you know, creating a, a rabbit out of nothing. And that's where it came from. It was Hebrew. Abra kadabra. God created out of nothing. He spoke and his words went into the ground and created us and created everything. That's my God. Not somebody that took what God created and, and mixed it all up and said that it was created first. No way. No way. I, I know my God. Science was made to prove God. We've lost sight of the truth, people. We don't even care what is true anymore and what isn't true. We are caught up in living our own lives, as I've said. There's no need for God. We are the masters of our own universe. We actually are starting to think this is our world. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, that is all about to change. Genesis 3, because of the devil's attempt to keep the woman's seed from fatally crushing his head, he was the mastermind behind a plan to defile human blood on a mass scale. Remember, one thing about the devil, the Bible says, he is the sum of all wisdom. Do not think that you're smarter than the devil. That's how Adam fell. That's how everybody falls because they think they're smarter than the devil. And you are not. You have to learn God's ways and not step outside of God because he is very smart. If the devil succeeded... The woman that God would impregnate with his son would have been defiled. And the son would not have been born. The first fruits would not have been born. Which means we would have never been able to overcome. We would have never been able to pierce the veil. 
because he pierced the veil for us. We would have never been able to go through it. We could have never died spiritually. We would have had to die, and then that would have been it. We, we, you realize we die spiritually so we can kick his tail in this world. Remember I told you God said to me, my son was slaughtered on a cross to give you power over the enemy. Why do you hide behind doors and wait for me to come back? Go out there and kick his butt. That would have all been impossible. The woman is Mary, but also, don't forget, it's also our soul. The devil is still after our seed that is created when we crucify our Adamic nature to the cross. In an effort to join with the Father, to birth the Son... This is what Revelation 12 is talking about when it says that the dragon is sitting there waiting for the child to be born. It's just like the doctor. <laughs> when you come out of your mama, he's sitting there waiting for you to be born because he pursues you. That son, he's pursuing you for an opportune time to get you. So don't think that because you're a son, that because you're rot, that you're above it. You're above the law. You're going you're gonna to get pulled down just as easy. You've got to stay in God. And it's really easy to start thinking, well, you know, I can handle him. Because you've got God in you and you're just like, you know, you want to go take him on. But God's like, don't do it. Stay in me. The many that are in the body of Christ... Is in Ephesians 4. Until we all come to the fullness. He gave some to be apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers. Until we all come to the fullness. That was the goal. For us to all come to the fullness. Jesus pierced the veil for the sons to come to the Father. And as you know, we must suffer if we are going to rule and reign. We must lose our lives for Christ's sake to find it. God sent forth his son in the fullness of time. Born of a woman. Born under the law. So that he might redeem those that are in the law. That he can get them out in that matrix. So to avoid the flood, because what happened was this was God's way of protecting his creation because everybody on the entire planet was defiled with Nephilim blood hear what I'm saying this is going to happen again we're in the same time period everybody on the planet is going to go after the beast except for the ones that their name is written in the Lamb's book of life so to avoid the flood and destroying Noah God told Noah to build an ark and he saved his people and destroyed the rest of it and it's going to be exactly the same way the wicked are going to be swept away the sea of souls the ones that have said I'm my own master of my universe nothing's ever going to happen to me I'm all about building my own kingdom here there is no God the wicked are going to be swept away. And the elite are going to hide in caves. And we are going to be protected in the ark. So I want to talk about an ark. An ark is cubic in shape. Let me show you. Genesis 6, 15 through 18 says, This is how you shall make it. The length of the ark, 300 cubits. Its breadth, 50 cubits. And its height, 30 cubits. So it's cubed. The ark was cubed. What else is cubic in shape? The city, the kingdom of God is going to be cubic. It's laid out as a square. And its length and its width and its height are equal. That means it's cubed. And then I saw this when I brought it up last week. 12 times 6. I didn't make my point that I wanted to make. God's kingdom is the number 12. We are the number six. Remember, flesh is not bad when it's been circumcised. So 12 times six is God tabernacling with us, which is 72. And so that is going to be 
the kingdom of God coming down. Remember I told you there's the, the bride and the kingdom, the actual place where we're going to live is going to be one. And that's what it's showing there is that its length and its height and its width are equal. And that's the city that we're going to live in. It's cubed. Go ahead. What else is cubed? Second Chronicles 3.8. Now he made the room of the Holy of Holies. Its length across the width of the house was 20 cubits. And its width was 20 cubits. And he overlaid it with fine gold. And what else? Exodus 25.10. They shall construct an ark of acacia wood, two and a half cubits long and one and a half cubits wide and one and a half cubits high. And you shall overlay it with pure gold. So there's no mistaking. God likes cubes. <laughs> Our DNA is the Holy of Holies, and it is the Ark of the Covenant, as I've told you before. The Ark of the Covenant is right here in us now. God wants to tabernacle in us. He no longer wants to dwell in man's temples. Here's another message. We are the Ark that he wants to hide the people in. I've been going out, and I've been talking, and I thought for sure some new people were coming this week because, I mean, you feel the pressure. Remember I told you that we've been coming here for two years, and we've been listening to the messages week after week after week. And I'm like, God, you know, I get so frustrated because you give me the most awesome messages. And, you know, 15 people at the most have heard it. He's like, oh, baby, when I put a squeeze on the atmosphere... They're going to come. And this week, guys, I'm telling you, I normally, I'm getting in there and I'm like, let me tell you about God. Let me tell you something neat that I learned this week. God would not let me do that this week. That's, that's really odd for me, guys. Because I'm constantly talking. And all I did this week was love people. I just loved them in their soul. I just loved them. I barely talked unless somebody pulled it out of me. I barely talked about God. And I'll tell you why, because I believe the door is shutting. They're not listening. I thought for sure. I mean, I had three people that I thought for sure were going to come tonight. For whatever reason, they didn't. But they're going to wish they did. Go ahead. I found this interesting. God was talking to me about hide. Look what it says in the Bible. Genesis 18, 16, God says, Shall I hide from Abraham what I'm about to do to Sodom and Gomorrah? Shall I hide from Abram what I'm about to do? Exodus 2, 3, Moses' mother said she personally could not hide Moses any longer, so she made an ark for him. Deuteronomy 7 shows that God is going to send hornets upon the ites in the land that are hiding from you in the caves. They're going to be hiding in the caves, and God's going to send hornets in the caves. I love it. Deuteronomy 31, the Lord says that he will hide his face from those that turn to other gods, and they will be consumed. You don't want him to hide his face. Joshua 2 shows that Rahab told Joshua to hide for three days. Job 14 says, hide me in Sheol. That's where we need to be right now, in Sheol. Hide me in Sheol until your wrath returns to you, God. Hide me in the shadow of your wings, that is Sheol, in Psalm 17. Psalm 31 Hide them, the Bible says, it's the son of man, in the secret place of your presence from the conspiracies of man. I believe it's time to hide. I believe God's getting ready to hide us in the ark while his wrath passes over. Go ahead. Isaiah 26, 20 through 21. Come, my people. This is what he was talking to me about all week. Come, my people, enter into your rooms and close your doors behind you. Hide for a little while. Ooh, I feel the anointing right there. Until indignation runs its course. Whoa. For behold, the Lord is about to come from his place 
to punish the inhabitants of the earth for their iniquity. And the earth will reveal her bloodshed and will no longer cover her slain. Events are time portals. They're a chain of countless coincidences culminating into an eruption. We will never forget September 11, right? We will never forget March 11. Those are time portals. Those are eruptions of events. They send shockwaves all over the world. Events connect people with time. This is what I was talking to Charlie about a while back. Watch me. This is how I see God. He created everything, and then Adam and Eve fell in sin, right? Therefore, time was created. Okay, and time is a cup. Remember, I've told you that the, the cup of the iniquities has to fill, and then God pours the wrath out, okay? Well, when he created time, he started right here at the top, and we've gone around, all the way around, and we've come back up, okay? Well, the devil, when I taught you in Mark of the Beast, the devil wants man's kingdoms to continue. Man's kingdom is time. God doesn't want man's kingdom to continue. God wants to, to interact with his creation. So therefore, we're going to get off of this time wheel. The way we do that is we have to connect our hearts with him. When our hearts are connected with him, we get off of that and we're connected with him. And that's when Moses saw the burning bush. Moses was walking along, imagine, just like the movie, something like that. Maybe one of his sheep strayed and he was looking for it. And the Bible says that there was a burning bush there and Moses turned aside. Let me see what this is. This bush is burning, yet it's not being consumed. If he wouldn't have turned aside, Moses wouldn't have gone to see the bush. I think it actually is like this. He turned aside and then saw the bush. I think that's how it went. But the point is, what I'm trying to say, is that we've got to turn aside from the world. We've got to turn aside from what we think is important in order to get off of man's clock and get on God's timetable. Because God talks about appointed days. I'm going to show you that. In, um, appointed days. And if we're over here, then we're not going to be able to be connected with his appointed days. Does that make sense? Okay. And what happens is it, a circle is time, right? Well, radiuses and circumference, those are events. Those are time portals. Those are lines on a circle. Boom, something happened. You see what I'm saying? Okay, so events connect people with time. The word pi is light. The ratio of a circle's area to the square of its radius is pi. Events in one place trigger other events in other places. Holograms are three-dimensional record of original object. You got an object here and it shines and an object catches that light and then it shines over here and it catches the light here and it shines over here. That's how I see the Bible. That's how I see the patterns because it's holograms that my eye is catching because I remember certain words and the patterns. That's holograms. Holography allows scattered light to create a 3D image. Our conscious awareness is a time gate through which the past and the future link into the present reality. Am I talking too scientific? Is that pretty cool? That's how time works for us, guys. I call that prophetic reality. When you have patterns that repeat over and over. When you're going on the Holy Spirit highway and you hear things over and over, you know it's God talking to you. That's prophetic reality. That's not just events happening. They're connected. God's talking to you when you hear repetition. Truth demands to be seen. 
But my question is, will you see it before it's too late? God demands for you to see something. When our hearts are aligned and off of this man's time, when our hearts are aligned with his will, we're not going to be destroyed with man's time. We're not going to be destroyed with, with the destruction that he's got planned for the world. We're aligned with him. So when our hearts are aligned with his will, then we start having those kairos moments. That's why God talks to you. Because you're not connected to this. See, you're, you're looking outside of the physical realm. You're looking with your spiritual eyes. And you're going to see him. Because you're not looking in man's time. Leviticus 23, 1 through 2. The Lord spoke again to Moses saying, Speak to the sons of Israel and say to them, The Lord's appointed times, which you shall proclaim as holy convocations. Let's talk about these. On the 14th day of the first month, for us, that's going to be sundown, April the, 9th, April the 18th. That's Passover. That is the exact day that Jesus died. Nisan 14. The firstborn of Egypt also died the night, that night before Passover. That's where we get the word Passover. I think something's going to happen. God's a pattern God. He's going to kill the firstborns again. For seven days you shall present an offering by fire to the Lord. That's the unleavened bread. And what do you do? What's so significant about the unleavened bread? You get the sin out. Remember I showed you how they, the, the Jewish ladies, what they do, it's been a tradition all along. They, they go through their house. That's where spring cleaning comes from. They go through their house and they get everything out of their house that's unclean. They even have this little ritual that they, um, the father goes in to see if there's any dust on the windshield. I mean the windshield. The window seal. <laughs> I'll get it right in a minute. So it's a type and shadow of getting the yeast out, getting the sin out. And you do that for seven days from the time that Jesus dies. And that's speaking of his, bury, his burial. Get him. Two days later, after Passover, then we celebrate what's called first fruits. Because he is the first fruit that was resurrected. That is resurrection. I believe something extremely significant is going to happen. Remember, the devil counterfeits. Resurrection is going to be on the 21st, and it's a.m. That is a Sunday. Begin counting the omer at the Passover, and it's the omer is the days up until Pentecost. You have to count 50 days. Remember when the Bible talks about the disciples being in the upper room and the Holy Spirit fell on them? The reason why they were all assembled there is because they were counting the omer. So something, they knew something was coming because they were counting the 50 days of the omer. And that's an appointment. And that's Pentecost. That's when the Holy Spirit fell. I believe that's when we're going to be baptized in fire. That day is June the 7th. See, these days don't work unless we are connected to his time calendar. I believe what God is showing me is that these days have been in our Bible. Well, let me get to it. I'll show you that. So the 7th of June is Pentecost, and the Holy Spirit fire was poured out on all flesh in Acts 2. Rosh Hashanah is September the 28th, and that's when the Moses generation and the church is going to disappear. I don't believe in the rapture. I believe they're going to see the promised land, and I believe God's going to take them. But they're going to die, and they're not going to have eternal life, because Moses does not have eternal life. Ten days from that day are the days of all. And you talk about judgment. God has the books open, and for ten days he's looking. And after the ten days, the books are shut, and he pours out wrath. I believe we're going to see something. The day Joshua took the land is ten days I mean, I'm sorry, it is the 10th day 
and it is four days before the Passover. I believe we're going to take the land on the 10th. I mean, not the 10th, but 10 days. I'll show you what that day is. Uh, it's the 15th, in case I don't say it. Because this, yeah, that April 18th is the 14th. That evening is the 14th. April the 14th is the day we're supposed to take the land. And I've been getting really excited about that because I've been studying how on that day, well, I think I have a slide, actually. I'll come back to it if I don't. Remind me, okay? So on the evening of October the 7th, that's the end of the 10 days, and that's called Yom Kippur. And the books are shut, and like I said, the wrath and the judgment will be poured out. October the 12th through the 19th, these are actual dates of this year. That is Sukkot, and that is the celebration, a whole week of Jesus' real birthday. His real birthday is during that week. And see, if you're God, and you have a son who's going to be the first fruits to set all the people free, you're going to have a huge celebration planned in time, right? Well, that's it. And who copies God? The devil. So therefore, we have Saturnalia, which is a whole week of nothing but orgies and gift giving and sacrifice, blood sacrifices. That's all going to return because I see it in the Bible. They gave gifts when the two witnesses were killed. They were thrilled that the two witnesses were killed and they gave gifts. I believe that is showing Saturnalia. Anyway, that's Jesus' real birthday, and it's a whole week long that we celebrate. Go ahead. The mistake I made was I said last week's message, I said that it was the 10th day of the seventh month that Joshua took the land. But let me show you what God showed me. He took me back, and he showed me that jo uh, Moses dies right before Joshua 1. It says, Joshua, rise up. Mo your Moses, my servant, is dead. Now you get up. <laughs> so before we even start Joshua 1, Moses is gone. In Joshua 2, spies are sent in, and Rahab is warned. Three days... They have to wait. What is three days? Sheol. Adamic nature has to die. So you wait three days where the Christ are right now, I believe. And then Joshua is exalted. And the Christ are carrying the ark into the overflowing Jordan. Probably another flood is going to come in Joshua 3. When you cross the Jordan, this is what I've been excited about. <laughs> when you cross the Jordan, you are cut off. From the Hivite, the Amorite, the Canaanite, the Hittite, the Jebusite, the Perizzite, the Girgashite. Do you know what that means? You don't owe any more money. Hallelujah. We are severed from man's world. We are set free, guys. When we cross that Jordan, that's it. Our Father owns this world. When the soles of the sun's feet, these are the people that were carrying the ark. Think about the ark being they were carrying the ark, but we're going to have the ark inside of us. Okay? When the soles, remember I told you feet are important. When the soles of the sun's feet rest in the waters of the Jordan, the waters, listen to how this said, flowing down from above. I never saw that before. Now, I know it means flowing down from above here, but think about what we're experiencing right now, the dark rift. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. We are in the dark rift. We are in the valley of the, sh of the uh, dark rift. We're in the valley of the shadow of death. So, when the soles of the sun's feet rest in the waters of Jordan, the waters flowing down from above will stand in one heap. And it will sever us. Remember what the Red Sea did with the Pharaoh, with Pharaoh and the Egyptians? <laughs> Me and Charlie were talking. We were like, okay, we're going to stand there at the Red Sea. And we're going to say, all right, God, we are so vulnerable. Part. <laughs> and then what happens is the, the Pharaoh, he pursues us. And then he is cut off by the water. Something's going to happen, guys. I'm telling you. 
Joshua 3, 17, And the priests that bear the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord stood firm on dry ground in the midst of the Jordan, and all the Israelites passed over on dry ground until all the people were passed clean over Jordan. That's the Ark. See how it was flooding? And then they stand there with the Ark of the Covenant on them, and the people pass by. Therefore, it's like an ark, and the waters are rushing. It's the same pattern. You see the pattern? Now, I'm going to show you something about Sidonia tonight. Take up the stones as a memorial in Joshua 4. So when they're in the, the um, Jordan, and it's parted, so he tells one from each tribe to go get a stone. And they take up that stone from the midst of the Jordan, and they put it where they're going as a memorial. As a monument, this is what happened on this day. Instead of September 11th when everybody died, that's a memorial for us, right? This is going to be our memorial that God severed us from the ites. Hallelujah. Mm. They entered the land on the 10th day of the first month. That will be April 15th for us. April 14th, April 15th. The ites were afraid. When they entered the land, the Bible says the ites were afraid and the camp was circumcised. So what I see is I was hoping that the new people would come. Because, see, we're ready, okay? We're in the ark. Everybody's in the ark, right? But they're not. So when they came in, they're not circumcised, right? They're still in their soul. They're still messing around. They don't even know they're... So they would have to be circumcised. See? That's where it's done, right there. They keep the Passover in the land, in the new land... They keep the Passover, and then, whoo, gosh, I feel the Holy Spirit right now. Then Jesus himself shows up. The captain of the Lord of hosts shows up in Joshua 5, and then we take down the matriarchal soul, Jericho. It's a pattern. Time, feast, the word is moed, an appointment, a fixed time, guys. A season, listen to this, convene for a definite purpose, the place of meeting, a signal appointed beforehand. How many people ever did a fire drill or a tornado drill? That's what this is. Every year they would have these moates. Every year we have moates. And God says, I'm going to be there. Are you going to be there? And it's, and it's what it is. It's an appointed time. This is where we're going to meet. And we're going we're gonna to have a moed. Watch what it says. It says a signal appointed before time, I mean beforehand, beforehand. Due, due time. And see, God moves on appointed times. That's when you're going to see him move. That's how the Bible shows you. That's why he even takes the time to tell you on such and such a date they did blah, blah, blah. And it was patterns. If you go back to Leviticus 23, you can see it's all these dates. God never moves without these dates. These are his appointed times. Convocation was really what got, got me excited this week. I used to get, I mean, I, I still get excited about my wades, but look at this. I never saw this. A convocation is a mikra, and it means a rehearsal. So just like that fire drill or the rehearsal, you know, for a play, when we, we're going on real. We're going on for the real show. Something called out of the time of man. See this? A public meeting. Properly, he's going to address by name. He's inviting you as a guest. Whew, I feel the anointing. These are God's appointments, and God is light. And when he shows up, then his light is connected to our light. Events are connected like 3D to get our attention. The Amorites are holding us captive, and they will let us go. What I'm telling you, I believe, is because people are ready. I don't know if the number is actually 144,000. But I know that people are ready. So they're not all caught up on this man's scale anymore. God's let the time go around. And now we have reached the moed. The definite purpose. The fixed time. The place. 
the signal beforehand. It's due. We've reached the time for the cup of iniquity to be poured out. So it will set us free. Therefore, we can take the Bible and we can use it like a calendar. Remember I told you that I feel like every day I feel like I'm being, you know, just aligned with the Word of God. I believe, just like I preached last week, how when the sun comes down in that, in that dark rift and everything, all the signs are enacted. You see? They're, they're active. It's going to, like, be some kind of code or something. You know, when the sun comes in, it's like a lock, and then everything is active. That's what I see the Bible like. It's like every word. We don't understand what the Bible is saying in different places, but I believe that every word is supposed to be pertinent for today. You see what I'm saying? So we want... Um, we won't, I believe that, you know, your Bible's going to get taken away in this world, but it's not going to matter for the people that have it in them. In the movie 2012, the sun triggers catastrophic chain reactions that cause the destruction of the earth. That was a movie. This is real. Since most people watch movies, God uses movies. In February 15th of this year, sun erupts with most powerful solar flares in four years. February 16th, thousands protest Wisconsin anti-union bill. February 17th, mega solar flare fuels earthly disruption in light shows. February 17th, solar flares communication grids could be disrupted. February 18th, Democrats flee Wisconsin Senate to slow anti-union bill. February 18th, union showdowns spread across the country. February 18th, Tea Party to rally for Wisconsin anti-union bill. February 19th, lawmaker, governor's plan has torn Wisconsin apart. Do you see the time portals? You see how the events? Watch this. The sun awoke from its slumber and unleashed X-class solar flares, the most powerful kind for the first time in four years. Light equals energy. And the Bible says sun is judgment and that's what they look like those solar flares those red things like that those are so powerful and that's what triggered the earthquakes as above so below remember i told you how moses was building the tabernacle god showed him build it according to the plans that i give you and that was like heaven February 17th through 18th, Wisconsin had an earthly eruption. So we had an earthly, we had a sky eruption, and then we have an earthly eruption. Union bill, mass protests. Why is Wisconsin singled out? In the movie 2012, Wisconsin is said to be the new South Pole. I said that wrong before, not the North Pole, the South Pole. The movie actually says that Wisconsin is going to be the new South Pole. I honestly think they're telling us our warning in this movie. Um, it says in here, it says at the end, this is the last uh, scene of the movie. It says, we all have relatives in Wisconsin. The end. <laughs> That's pretty interesting. Sun equals judgment of God. The cube equals the sunspot box from which solar flares erupted. Box, cube. See it? Go ahead. Coincidences? I think not. On January 14th, 200 cows were found dead in Wisconsin. On January 23rd, Green Bay Packers from Wisconsin advanced to the Super Bowl. On January 24th, Oprah Winfrey revealed her long-lost sister who lives in Mil Milwaukee, Wisconsin. On January 25th, Obama held Sputnik moment in State of the Union speech. Speech of Soviet Sputnik 4 fell in Wisconsin in 1962. Customary Republican response to SOTU, speech delivered by congressman from Wisconsin. On January 26, Obama's first visit speech after his SOTU speech in Manitowoc, Wisconsin, where pieces of Sputnik 4 fell in 1962. On January 26, American Idol episode in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. On February 6, Green Bay Packers from Wisconsin win the Super Bowl. Mid-February, big protest against anti-union bill introduced by governor in Wisconsin. You think those are all coincidence? I know that one by itself would be like, whatever. But this is God talking. This is how he talks. 
He's going bang, 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 bang. He's signaling. He's showing us something. Go ahead. Uh, the Orion rela- correlation theory is something that I found interesting. This guy named Robert Baval, he said there is a correlation between the location of the three largest pyramids of the Giza pyramid complex and the three middle stars of the constellation Orion. I keep saying it wrong. It's Orion or Orion, whatever you want to say. But what does God's word say about stars? I saw this this week. I don't think I ever really saw this before. I was thinking more this was the sun and the moon that was doing this. But uh, verse 16 in Genesis 1, God made the two greater lights, which is the sun and the moon, the greater light to govern the day and the lesser light to govern the night. And look what he says. Just in a little half sentence, he made the stars also. Who are the stars? We are, right? Watch. God placed them in the expanse of the heavens to give light on the earth and to govern the day and the night. And look at this, guys. And to separate the light from the darkness. That's our job. And God saw that it was good. There was evening, there was morning, a fourth day. Remember what I told you about four? There are three days of Sheol and then the fourth day. They were intentionally built to connect with Orion's belt. These three pyramids in Egypt, the Giza pyramids, were intentionally built to connect with Orion's belt. The other pyramids connect to complete the Orion constellation. And the Nile River is exactly positioned where the Milky Way is. By chance? I think not. The Egyptians associated the stars of Orion with Osiris. Osiris was the sun god of rebirth and afterlife. Remember, the devil always counterfeits God. Graham Hancock wrote a book called The Fingerprints of the Gods, where he contends that the pyramids were made by the first world. What I'm talking about is Lucifer, his first world. Isaiah 14, Ezekiel 28. That's why I've been studying Egyptian history. Watch, guys. Time. It starts out. See, the beginning of time. And that was all Egyptian history at the beginning. And now we're coming back around. That's why I've been studying it. Because it was before the Bible. I mean, I'm sorry, not the Bible. It was before the children went into Egypt. You see what I'm saying? They were already there because of Ham. Noah's son, Ham, is the one who was, his, his, he's the one who did something with his mother. Remember Noah's wife? He saw the nakedness of his father, and Noah cursed him. And so, the, he, he, I'm sorry, he didn't curse Ham, he cursed Canaan, which is what's interesting is because if somebody did something, you curse them. Not their son, but I think the son was the offspring. You see? So Canaan was cursed. Anybody cursed by God is damned. So whatever it was, it had something to do with the Nephilim. So the Nephilim was at some point in him or whatever, and he, cur- he was cursed. So therefore, he goes over to Egypt, and he starts the Egyptians, the pharaohs, that's where the Nephilim and the humans come together to create the force again to destroy the earth. So then the children of Israel are in uh, Israel, and then because of the famine, they go into Egypt, and they're there for 400 years under the, the demonic rule. You see? That's why I find this interesting. That's why I find Egyptian history interesting is because it was those pyramids were made from the first world before the Bible. Before the Bible. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. That was Lucifer's world. Remember, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness covered the waters of the deep. That's all it says about the, new, the old world. But then it has Isaiah 14, Ezekiel 28, that talk about it. So I believe that those pyramids were made from the first world. And this world was destroyed by the Ice Age. The Ice Age destroyed the world because of a polar shift, uh, the pole shift. There was a major pole shift in 10,450 B.C. Antarctica was further from the South Pole than it is today. The first world had intricate knowledge of astronomy, architecture, mathematics, geometry, 
See all that? He writes of God men, which is Osiris, this guy named Tote, and Quetzalcoatl. Remember him? Aaron Von Daniken, he also wrote this book. I mean, he wrote this book. It's called Chariot of the Gods. And he wrote that technologies and religions and ancient civilizations were given to us by ancient astronauts who were welcomed as gods. Nephilim, hello. Aliens are Nephilim, demons, whatever you want to call them, they're still the same thing. People, wake up. Me and Tim were sitting there watching um, the History Channel, and they were talking about aliens, and they were, oh, we got a really strong evidence that, that we came from aliens, and blah, 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 blah. And we're like, dummy, it is true if you just say demons, because God created us, and then everything happened in um, Genesis 6. The fallen angels came down. It's not that hard. They're proving, science is proving the Bible. <laughs> Lucifer ruled the earth before our day and so therefore i believe he's he is the one those pyramids i believe they came from the first world and all that stuff was left so when ham went over there and canaan went over there they were like us can you imagine going to a world and seeing things already there you want to know what was there before you and that's how it happened so his physical body lucifer's physical body was taken away but not yet destroyed. So what he does is he embodies different objects to speak to humans and to tell them ancient secrets of heaven. The Bible came first, not demons counterfeiting. Go ahead. Osiris, I want to show you three guys. This is the counterfeit father. He's depicted as a green-skinned man with Egyptian beard. They aspired to have union with him. They believed that union would give them eternal life. Mark of the beast. They believed he existed before the new kingdom, which is the Egypt in our Bible. They called him the father of all Egyptian humans. He was widely worshipped as the Lord of the dead by all cultures until, this is interesting to me, until Constantinople. See, you had the Egyptian rule, okay? And, of course, we had the six kingdoms. But the thing is, is we had Caesars after that in Rome. See, because you had Babylon, Medes and Persians, Greece, and then you had Rome. And Rome were the Caesars. So the Egyptian pharaohs merged into all that and then became the Caesars. The Caesars then became the Pope. And then what's going on? Egypt prime minister has retired. The Dalai Lama has retired. Everything's being set up, guys. I see the dots connecting. So what is going to be interesting is the Pope is going to let the Egyptian ruler or whoever it's going to be, the, the Antichrist, he's going to give him the rule back. So it went from one to another to another, and they're just going to pass it on. It's not going to be a big deal. And that's why I found it interesting that Constantinople stopped the worship of the Egyptian gods. The Roman Catholic Church. He had many names. And, you know, that's the thing is you get, you see all these names in, in Egyptian history and you're like, who in the world is that? But it's all the same people. His name was Ra, Ra Atum. But the point is, he is the counterfeit father. Go ahead. I wanted to show you this. Remember how I've been talking about how Christians believe that you're not perfected until you get to heaven? Look where it comes from. The afterlife is the place of judgment. That's what the Egyptians taught. This is where Bible believers get their belief still today that you can't be one with God until you die. The Egyptians taught that judgment comes after you die. When you died, you were escorted to the hall of the dead. You must first face a tribunal of 42 divine judges. If your heart was heavier than the feather of an ispus, which is where we get the phoenix, bird then you were devoured by a crocodile or a hippopotamus <laughs> if you led a life of conformance which is according to what they say is conformance teaching their ways and god's ways you were welcome into the kingdom of osiris if not if they thought that you did not live your life like that you were tormented before you were annihilated these people worship demons guys of course they want you to believe 
that you are not perfected until you die. Because if you can possibly believe that you're perfected before you die, you can kick some devil butt. Tote, he's the counterfeit Holy Spirit. He was also called Anabas. He was considered to be the heart, the intelligence, the mind. He was Ra's tongue. See how he counterfeits? Ra's will was spoken through him. His job was to maintain the universe. He was worshipped in religion, philosophy, arts, magic, writing, mathematics, science, and involved in the judgment of the dead. He was the one who weighed your heart. They regarded him as self-begotten, self-produced. His power was unlimited. He even had more power than Ra. He regulated times and events. See, this is the Holy Spirit that's working right now with these time portals. He regulated time and events, and Ra was the sun god, which is light, and Anubis was the moon god, which, was, which is dark. And he had a phoenix head. That's what that is, is Ispus. So phoenix is very important. We had Quasalcodal last week, but let me tell you another couple things I found. Quasalcodal is the counterfeit sun. He was the god of the wind. He was associated with rain and the giver of harvest, which is also connected to food. He's connected with Venus, which is also connected with Jubilee. He was involved in merchandise. Remember how the Bible says he was the one who was the merchandiser? He fell because of his, uh, the great sin in his merchandise. Remember, he had people that were under him, and instead of letting them believe that God wanted them to be a part of what he was and get under them and serve them, he ruled over them, and that's why he lost everything. He was the high priest. He was full of knowledge. He was depicted as a feathered serpent because he was a flying serpent. The boundary between earth and sky, that was what his focus was. He was praised for creation. See how? The word. God of the morning star. How you have fallen. Morning star, son of the dawn. Lord of the star of the dawn. He was connected to death and resurrection. His blood was used to make humans. When all the people were destroyed on the earth, he went down in the underworld and he got bones and he put his blood. You don't want to know how. But anyway, he... <laughs> anyway, he put his blood with their bones and he created humans again. Which is quite possible, guys, that that's where cavemen... Have you ever wondered where cavemen came from and stuff? That they're, That's where they try to prove the evolution. Like, we, that's the missing link where we came from. You know, there was an ape and then there was a caveman and then there's us. It's very possible that he did create humans like cavemen. Just very possible. Um... I wouldn't call it create because you got to get your own dirt <laughs> when you create. But his blood was used to make humans. His birth was a virgin birth. His sister, I found this interesting. Remember when we talked about Lot and how his, his um, daughters got him drunk and created the Moabites and the Ammonites? I found it interesting. That's where they got it from. Because his sister got him drunk and laid with him. And he was so upset that he burned himself. He's a martyr. He burned himself with fire, and so his heart became the morning star. The masses still look for his return. Every religion is waiting for their Messiah. Do you know that the Mormons still believe today that Quetzalcoatl is Jesus, and he look, they look for his return? The Roman Catholics actually say that he was, the, he was a New Testament apostle of Jesus. New Age looks for his return to earth as their Messiah. Jesus Christ are the sons, and they are our only Messiah. He is, the son is the Messiah. Quasalcodal is his counterfeit and nothing more. You need to know that the devil is a good counterfeiter, guys. Don't be fooled. Judgment is the only difference between the real Christ and his counterfeit one. The Christ must pay the price. They must die and go to Sheol for the sins of the people. And that's what qualifies them to have real power to judge the world. Don't lose sight of that. 
Now, here's where it gets interesting, guys. The Giza Pyramid is right next to Cairo, which recently had, what they call it? An uprising. It was connected to Orion's belt correlation theory. Venus, which I told you, is connected to the sun of the morning. It's also, you know, Venus is Jesus. I mean, the Christ, Jesus. But how you have fallen, sun of the morning. So he's a counterfeiter. Lucifer, the word Lucifer means light bringer. So as above, so below. Remember when Venus retrograded? Remember how I showed you how big of a deal that was? Venus retrograded and then rose again on Halloween 2010. I showed y'all all that. Well, this is how the Orion's belt is. You've got the pyramids right here. See the pyramids? They're connected to Orion's belt. As above, so below. The pyramid up here, you see that little stone on top of the pyramid? That's what's called the cornerstone. Remember where Christ is the cornerstone? Well, you know that the quasal codal is actually connected to that, and it says the Ben Ben stone is associated with the Ben U bird, which is the phoenix, the phoenix rising from the ashes. So that's all going to come into play. You really have to understand spiritual language to understand what's going to happen in the end times. Go ahead. The prime minister was forced to step down due to an uprising. All to make way for the human called the Antichrist that will be embodied by the devil himself to lead the one world government. These are the headlines that follow. January 25th, three killed in Egypt protest. January 25th, State of the Union 2011, Obama held Sputnik, like I told you. Dawn of the Space Age, that was the beginning of it. January 26th, Egypt protest, demonstrators face prosecution. January 26, thousands defy Egypt's leader. Didn't you wonder what all was behind all that? I mean, they had, like, murder in their face. <laughs> they were like, ah. January 26, astronomers discover oldest galaxy yet seen. January 27, Egypt unrest. Uh, ready to lead transition. January 27, Yemenists join protest wave. January 27th, Egypt protests force dialogue with ruling party. January 28th, Egypt sends army into the streets and mass protest. January 28th, Mubarak maintains power and asks cabinet to resign. As above, so below. More strange events followed. Ark, Ark, can Saul was the trigger place for a series of birth pains that began in 2011. December 23rd, Central Arkansas, uh, growing weary of relentless tremors. December 31st, six dead in Arkansas. Missouri twister outbreak. January 2nd, Arkansas game officials probe mystery of fallen birds. January 3rd, dead fish cover 20 miles of Arkansas River. January 4th, Stress event blamed after birds rain from the sky. You think it's coincidence? No. Solar flares affects the earth, causing earthquakes, causing dead birds and fish. See this right here? This is Memphis. And this over here is where the falling birds in Arkansas. And this right here are the quake clusters that I'm going to show you in a minute. They're all on the same latitude. And that is highly significant. I don't know if you remember me teaching back in Genesis 11 when we talked about um, uh, when we talked about the Tower of Babel and all that. But I taught this. I actually showed you how the meridians is how God's going to destroy the earth. There was something about the pyramids that were connected to the stars, and every one of the pyramids have been built according to the stars, and God's going to go down that line and boom, boom, boom. That's how it's going to be. They're all connected. That was your first time. Yeah? You were like, where did she get this from? <laughs> Wait, what kind of bird? Blackbirds. Does that fit with the Bible? Genesis 8, 6 through 7. Then it came about at the end of 40 days that Noah opened the window of his ark, when he, which he had made, and he sent out a raven. I looked at the word raven is arab, and it means to be darkened before evening. The birds were red-winged blackbirds. Red shows that they successfully completed the red horse stage. 
but black shows they're stuck in it. The black horse stage, because you know what comes after the black horse? The green horse, and they won't lay their lives down to subdue the earth and produce its fruit. These birds represent the Moses generation that has been faithful in teaching the elementary things, but they won't advance past them. That's the Girgashites. See, that shell has got to come off of the sons. The Lord of the Rings had a famous quote. We set out to save the Shire, and we did it, Sam, but not for me. See, it's time for the Joshua generation to get her done. From January to February, these are the locations of the earthquakes just in Arkansas. See that? Seeing a holographic pattern. Do you see it? See how God is saying Ark, Egyptian uprising, Venus. Everything is all lining up, guys. Pyramids, latitudes. That's how many earthquakes they had from January to February. Just in that area, right there. Go ahead. The pyramids are like, um, they're linked together. The pyramids are are portals. Would I tell you are portals also? Time, events are portals. Pyramids are portals to the underworld. I want to show you something. Down here is Australia. In the middle is Hawaii. And on the other side is Memphis. That line I showed you that went across. Look what's connected. The Memphis, there's a pyramid that's there. The Oklahoma City is on the same latitude. The Marriott Pyramid in Albuquerque, Mexico, New Mexico is on the same latitude. The Walter Pyramid is on, in Long Beach, California is on the same latitude. Go ahead. There's an interesting place called Pine Gap that's in Australia. It's near Christ Church, that, that uh, earthquake we had in, in Christ Church. It is a high priority, top secret area where it is believed that there is an undersea cable. Did you see that? Undersea cable link to the United States. Strange flying objects that can only be identified as spaceships are stored in facilities there. Is that really too hard to believe? The Bible tells us that they will return. There, I'll say it again because that was lightning that popped. <laughs> okay, what, what, there's, what I found out was in Pine Gap, I've heard of this, but I found where it was. There is an undersea cable that goes from Australia to the United States. It's a place where the United States elite can hide in that cave. And it goes all the way to Australia. And it's, what's interesting is it's like a little area by itself, and it's highly, highly contained. But there have been people that have shown up there and they saw spaceships that were stored in facilities. And they were like, what's going on? And they erased all their film and everything. But the Bible tells us they're going to return, Matthew 24, 21 through 25. For then there will be a great tribulation such as not occurred since the beginning of the world until now, nor ever will. Unless those days had been cut short, no life would have been saved. But for the sake of the elect, those days will be cut short. Then if anyone says to you, Behold, here is the Christ, or there he is, do not believe him. For false Christ and false prophets will what? Arise. See, uprising. God doesn't mince words. They will arise and will show great signs and wonders so as to mislead, if possible, even the elect counterfeiting the real resurrected sons. Remember, they show up first, and then we're revealed. Well, what's interesting is 19.5 latitude is highly significant. There's something called a tetrahedral constant, and it derives from the geometric configuration of a circumscribed tetrahedron. So this is the South Pole. It's got a 19.5 degree north um, latitude, and a zero point north longitude. I think that's how it goes. But anyway, Richard Hoagland is known for something called hyperdimensional latitude. Guys, that's the spiritual world. Hyperdimensional latitude is connected to the spiritual world. I saved all this for you. <laughs> Shows that this specific angle 
represents a gateway to other planets and locations. These are the coordinates that NASA uses when they come in and they land in a, a certain planet or whatever. These coordinates are spiritual coordinates. Pyramids and other locations are connected to the solar system and can transmit energy and light. That's what he found. Dr. Holglin did extensive research on Mars, this place called Cydonia. And right here you see this face? That's actually a pyramid. I think God wanted us to find this, and I'm going to show you why. That pyramid has the same angle. That photo was taken in 1972. Most people heard about the face of Mars, but nothing ever else was said about it, right? Let me show you what's been hit. His research shows that it is an interdimensional gateway or portal. The Giza pyramids also produce the very same angle. That's the Giza pyramids right there. 19.5 is extremely important. This is why the planet's movements throughout the solar system affect the Earth. As above, so below. Along with 19.5 degree latitude, the longitude of 33 degrees is also a very important coordinate. NASA also confirms the, that the Pathfinder in 1997 landed on Mars at exactly these coordinates. I was just showing you, I was going to talk about the Time River. I'm going to hold that for another time. But I wanted to show you the 33 east and the latitude is 19, the longitude and the latitude is 19.5 degree north at uh, the Euphrates River. I'll show you that later. But the lander, we're talking about the Pathfinder uh, landed on Mars. The lander dropped on the tetrahedral latitude that was tetrahedral in shape. In other words, when they came down on Mars, there was a tetrahedral landing already there. At that moment of touchdown, Earth was positioned. They saw Earth, and Earth was positioned 19.5 degrees above the eastern Martian horizon as seen from the landing site. There's not just an intelligent pyramid on Mars. There's a whole city, guys. <laughs> there is a whole city. Now you can continue to ignore the truth and hide in your little box, whatever makes you sleep better at night, but it doesn't negate truth. Truth is truth whether you want to believe it or not. So either research it yourself or stop denying it. You know, I can't stand naysayers. Research it yourself or just go, okay, well, I'll believe it until I see it. You know, remember Acts 17, 11, the Bereans received with all joy what they said, and then they went home and they searched the scriptures to see if it was so. Well, this is all trigonometry measurements according to Sidonia. I think we got intelligent life force up there, <laughs> okay? This is a better look of it. This is Sidonia geometric relationship model. And guys, what really interests me about Sidonia, remember I told you about the little stones that were in a heap, like a memorial, when Joshua and them were in the Jordan, and the Jordan was parted, and they were told to go get stones and take them out and put them where they were going to camp that night? They had the same monument of stones on Sidonia. Very interesting to me. So why hasn't it been plastered all over the news? This guy named Dr. Stanley McDaniel, he's a professor who has done all this extensive research. He had researched the whole thing. Um, one of his friends was, the one, was an astronaut who saw Mars, and he took a picture of it. He thought it was weird because of that tetrahedral thing. And, and so he saw it, and he investigated and everything. And, and NASA, this is what they said. Uh, as my study of the work done by the independent investigators and NASA's response to their research continued, I became aware not only of the relatively high quality of the independent research, but also of glaring mistakes in the arguments used by NASA to reject this research. With each new NASA document I encountered, I became more and more appalled by the impossibly bad quality of the reasoning used. In other words, they were purposely making mistakes in the trigonometry. You think they're that dumb? No, they're actually smarter than that. 
It grew more and more difficult to believe that educated scientists could engage in such faulty reasoning unless they were following some sort of hidden agenda aimed at suppressing the true nature of the data. Eventually, my original naive view that all NASA scientists were sincerely interested in the truth was utterly shattered. They don't want people to find out about it, and I'll show you why. What they found here is hyperdimensional physics. If it was publicized, it would add another dimension to our four dimensions of space and time. Tetrahedral geometry and angular momentum are the key to uniting the physical world with the spiritual world. This unification would lead to our ability to harness a new form of energy, energy translating that it means free energy, <laughs> which in turn translates into a Gergeshite who is holding us back, that wants to rule and reign over us and keep us dependent on their provisions. And that's what the year of Jubilee is all about. God knows this stuff. He knows that he put it there. And it's up to man with his heart. Okay, we found a way we can have free energy. Are we going to rule and reign over the people? Or are we going to let them know? And that's what they've done. He's coming to set us free, guys. Go ahead. A tetrahedral is cubed. This is where it gets fun. This picture is a cube interlocked tetrahedra. The cube interlock tetrahedral the vertices of two interlock tetrahedras i don't want to get caught up in all but i wanted to show you it's a, it's a cube a stella octangula inscribed in a sphere pointing at the poles is also a cube standing on its corner see this god said build an ark but if you were to take that hyperdimensional physics theory and apply it to the recent earthquakes, something very interesting is revealed. He put the cube like this in the Arkansas January, February 11th, uh, 2011, quake epicenters are right there in Arkansas and Memphis. It's the same latitude and longitude in a cube form. Hawaii sits right in the middle of the coordinates that link us to the ring of fire. Pyramid, pier, pyre, means fire. Mid, middle. So pyramid means fire in the middle. What's in the middle of our solar system? The sun. A fireball at the center of our solar system. Ding, ding, ding. Hawaii, I wouldn't tell him this stuff. <laughs> saved it for him. Hawaii is fire in the middle. That's what it means. Hawaii means fire in the middle. And it sits right in the middle of the ring of fire, and it's aligned with all the pyramids. The latitude of Hawaii is 19.5 degrees north. Hawaii, that's supposed to be south. That's supposed to be south. Hawaii is connected by the coordinates to the Arkansas quakes of January, February 2011. See? By that latitude I was telling you about. And the, and the um, Memphis. Go ahead. The lat... He did? God tells Noah to build a cubed ark. Atlantis was a civilization of Nephilim that were destroyed by the flood of Noah. They were the ones that were there. They were intermingling with human, you know how Atlantis is known for fish people? Well, that was Nephilim, okay? And I'll show you something else. They worshiped this god named Dagon, and you're going to freak out when you see this. But anyway, Atlantis was a civilization of Nephilim that were destroyed by the flood of Noah. The Egyptians and the Mayans both show that they got their belief from Atlantis. Like I said, Noah had Ham, and the curse on Canaan is how the Nephilim were connected to the Egyptians because the Egyptians believe that they came from aliens. Haiti and Cuba and the Yucatan Peninsula all have that 19.5 degrees south, it's supposed to be south, latitude. 
Well, no, maybe that is the north one. Yeah. But Canberra, Australia is in their cube at 35.26 degrees south. This explains the alignment for the floods. Okay. Pyramids are the missing link to the cubic art code. Sun, fire in the middle is the Atlantean signature. The Atlanteans worship Dagon, which was the fish god. And looky here what's in the news this week. March the 14th, 2011, we found Atlantis. By mistake? By coincidence? No. This has all been planned. Ready or not, Atlantis, Nephilim, is rising from the underground. Hmm. 1 Timothy 4, 1 through 3, but the Spirit explicitly, explicitly says that in later times some will fall away from the faith, paying attention to deceitful spirits and doctrines of demons by means of the hypocrisy of liars seared in their own conscience as with a branding iron, men who forbid marriage. Look at their hats. See that little dip in the middle? That's Dagon. That's the Pope. Got the same hat. <clears throat> and they forbid marriage? Hmm. Pyramids are Atlantean wisdom carved in stone. They were designed to facilitate... I take authority over that storm, Lord. I thank you, Father. It's not going to disrupt anything we're doing here tonight. <clears throat> Pyramids are Atlantean wisdom carved in stone. They were designed to facilitate the re resurrection of hidden knowledge yet to be fully activated. And guys, this is going to happen in our day. The pyramids, which are time portals, are beginning to speak. Past and future are coming together. Genesis is coming together with Revelation. Time is a circle that comes back around. It began with the fall of man. God is outside of time. Because time is connected to sin. <clears throat> he sent his word to those in time. He sent a Bible. He said, this is what's going to happen. Into the sphere of time for all the people to know what was going to happen. His ways, his plans, his purposes are going to happen. Because he is the creator. We have reached the culmination of time. As I've talked about, DNA, the DNA of the Joshua generation is the culmination of time. The cup of iniquity of the Amorites, the fullness of time, we are the chosen ones. And now here we are in March, and Japan is experiencing an absolute meltdown. Let's take a look at it and see how God was telling us the whole time. Japan has all of our common denominators. Great Flood cube, ark, and even hints from 2012 from the movie. Atlantis, death and resurrection, and seven, the ring of fire, eight, radio, active, light, radio, and active uh, radio is nuclear. First is the solar flare. The X class happened again on March the 10th. This is a new set of patterns now. What I just showed you before was January, February. This is March. In March uh, 9th, 10th, there was another solar flare, X-Class. Number two, Wisconsin was back in the headlines on March the 9th. Another eruption. They rammed that anti-union bill down everybody's throat. Three, space shuttle Atlantis, final voyage. See how God's talking? Four, Dalai Lama retires. Remember what I said, the Egyptian god ceased to be worshipped as the Pope and such came into power. Five, then it happened. The Japanese Great Flood, March 11, 2011. See so what God's doing? It's patterns. Have you noticed the reactors, what shape they're in? Cubes. They're cube-shaped. The Fukushima reactors... That's what they look like down there. Before the explosion and after the explosion. They're cubed. And, and what's, what did I tell you about the cube? It's the sun, nuclear. See how God's talking? A nuclear cube exploding. The sun is a nuclear box exploding, expounding. 
I supposed to be explaining. Fire in the middle is the pyramid. In February, the sun exploded, the Wisconsin political eruption, deadly quaking, Christchurch, New Zealand, blah, blah, blah. And in the movie, 2012, it all started with the solar flares. Go ahead, Tim. To add to the validity of God speak, I kind of call it God speak, the solar flare location matches the same spot. It matches where Christchurch was hit. That's interesting to me. The bottom left in another square. Go ahead. Now, here's what I've been talking about. Here's the ring of fire. Hawaii's in the middle right here. February 27, 2010 was the second earthquake in Chile. Because the other one was back, remember, in October, November, something like that. So boom, boom. And then over here in September 03 and February 22nd, that's Christchurch, New Zealand. Boom, boom. Japan, there have been two earthquakes, maybe even more than that, March 11th, 2011. Tonight, the moon is the closest it's been to us tonight. Tonight, March the 19th, tonight. We're looking at tomorrow something's going to happen because the moon is the closest to the earth that it's been in a long time. Not only that, Venus, what I've been talking about, the orange alignment, Venus and the sun and the earth is all lined up in a straight line and we've got the moon that's a factor too. Remember I told you how God created the solar system to talk and to do things? February was the Christchurch earthquake, bottom left, hit twice. Not only that, but Chile was also hit again, and then Japan again and again, leaving only one more point on that square, and that is California. And already we've had the dead fish. You heard about the earthquake fish? We've had the dead fish. We've had the dirt dead birds. It's a coming. That's a pattern. God is speaking. The sun is playing a very important part in the judgment of our land. Now let's talk Bible. The sun is rising. Remember when I told y'all that? Remember I told you I heard God say? I didn't even know what it meant. I just knew God said the sun is rising. Well, this is what he showed me. The sun rose, started rising. That was the dawn that broke. December the 21st, 2010, that full moon lunar eclipse that happened on the winter equinox. Malachi 4, uh, 4, 1 through 6. For behold, the day is coming, burning like a furnace. And all the arrogant and evil, every evildoer will be chaff. And the day that is coming will set them ablaze, says the Lord of hosts, so that it will leave them neither root nor branch. But for you who fear my name, the sun of righteousness will rise with healing in its wings. Because we're going to be in an ark. And you will go forth and skip about like calves from the stall. Where are calves? They're held in a stall. You will tread down the wicked, for they will be ashes under the soles of your feet on the day which I'm preparing, says the, great, the Lord of hosts. And it goes on. Malachi 4.4, 4. remember the law of Moses. This is what got my attention. Remember the law of Moses, my servant, even the statutes and ordinances which I commanded him in Oreb for all of Israel. God, guys, this is amazing. Remember we had last week about a Aphiakis and Numbers 21? Malachi 4 is connected to Numbers 21. Look how it does it. It goes via... Deuteronomy 1 2. This is why you have to see the holograms. Okay? Numbers 21 does not say this exactly, but Numbers 21 does say, it says, Then they set out from Mount Or, because it doesn't say Oreb. See? It set out from Mount Or by the way of the Red Sea to go around the land of Edom. Edom is Mount Seir. You have to know the code. And the people became impatient because of the journey. 11 days. Now, go back to Deuteronomy 1-2. It says, it is 11 days journey from Horeb by the way of Mount Seir to Kadesh Barnea. And 11 is the number for purifying judgments. Fire. See how God talks? He connects. That's why I get excited about the word. Because he's telling us what's going to happen. 
In Numbers 21, 6 through 7, the Lord sent fiery serpents. Guys, um, I did a research a long time ago, and God reminded me of that. The word is nakash, and that's the seraphim. The seraphim are the, the fiery serpents. So those are the good guys, but then what are the devils? He got a third of the angels. Fiery serpents among the people, and they bit the people so that many people of Israel died. Remember I told you that God creates evil, chaos, calamity, destruction for his purposes. Go ahead, Tim. The Girgashites are the clay dwellers, and they are destroyed by water and flood. That's why God flooded the earth. Girgashite, clay dwellers, dirt. Water comes in, boom. God's trying to show us something. See, the devil is a clay dweller. What are we made out of? Clay. He wants you. Clay dweller that hadn't been circumcised, though, to take the mark of the beast. It's all connected. Fiery serpents bite the people, and then they have to look upon a standard to be healed. That standard is Ophiuchus, the new 13th sign. This is the staff of God, guys. When I was reading this week in Exodus, Aaron was told to throw that serpent down. God called it my staff, the staff of God. I'm giving you the staff of God. That's what he told me. He said, that's my staff. It's the staff of God. I seriously have reason to believe that Nibiru is heaven. There's nothing like it in our solar system. And every time it comes around, it wreaks havoc with, with other planets. And it's where the staff of God, all this kind of stuff. It's scary. It's, it's connected. So, I mean, people can't travel to it. All that kind of stuff. It's, it's very interesting to me. They can, I mean, I, I think it might be heaven. Because, see, you have to come to God's dark side in order to come to his light. But DNA is the Lord's son the name, the identity, all that's connected to Numbers 21 and the serpents. Go ahead. Numbers 21, 6 through 7, the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people and they bit the people so that many people of Israel died. So the people came to Moses and said, we have sinned. They didn't say that until they got bit. Because we have spoken against the Lord and you, intercede with the Lord that he may remove the serpents from us. Numbers 21, 8. Then the Lord said to Moses, Make a fiery serpent and set it on a standard, and it shall come about that everyone who is bitten, when he looks at it, he will live. After one-fourth of the earth is destroyed, and I'm going to tell you something, I think it's actually two-thirds. I was studying this week in Ezekiel 7, which I'm going to show you, and it says two-thirds. It's very possible what we're fixing to experience is two-thirds of the earth is going to be destroyed. The phoenix will rise from the ashes. The sun and the antichrist are going to rise. The antichrist is going to be revealed first and then us. The real sons will be qualified to walk among the people and display God's love for them. After he strikes them. After. As they are fully connected to the father, they're going to walk around just like Jesus. The sons are going to say, you know, my father told me to do this. My father told me. You're not going to do anything that, that your father didn't tell you to do. Just like Jesus, the sons are going to do also. Malachi 5, the rest of it. Behold, that's supposed to be Malachi 4. <laughs> yeah, there's no 5. <laughs> Behold, I'm going to send Elijah the prophet. I think that's Malachi 4, verse 5. I think that's what that is because it's a small chapter. The rest of it. Malachi 4. Four, verse 5. He fixed it for me. Uh, Behold, I'm going to send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and terrible day of the Lord. He will restore the hearts of the fathers to their children and the hearts of the children to their fathers. That's connected to DNA. So that I will not come and smite the land with a curse. Every time the mark of the beast has spread, God comes and smites the land with a curse. And that's what I am. I am Elijah. Turn or burn, people. I'm not talking about y'all, but I mean, I haven't even felt to tell the warning this week. I haven't even heard God say, tell them. You know, it's like, now it's like I'm going to strike them and then I'm going to heal them. That's what I'm hearing from God. Mm. The Elijahs are the ark, guys. 
Matthew 24, 37. For the coming of the Son of Man will be just like the days of Noah. For as in those days before the flood, they were eating and they were drinking and they were marrying and giving in marriage. That's Nephilim taking women and unclean foods to spread their mark. God's not going to say they were eating and drinking. I mean, we always eat and drink. That's something else. God's making a, a distinction, showing you in the days of Noah what they were doing. He's not going to say they were eating and drinking. Duh, everybody eats and drinks. That's eating and drinking, blood, violence. The Bible talks about the violence that was on the earth at that time. I am telling you right now, guys, that's what's fixing to be unleashed on our earth. Until the day that Noah entered the ark, and they did not understand until the flood came and took them all away. So will the coming of the Son of Man be. Then there will be two men in the field. One will be taken and one will be left. Two women will be grinding at the meal. One will be taken and one will be left. So the wicked are going to be swept away. The Christ, like Noah, will be in an ark. They will be the ark. The ark of the covenant that God tabernacles in. Psalm 21, 9. You will make them as a fiery oven. In the time of your anger. Who remembers what Genesis 15 says passed between the animal? The animal pieces, the covenant. A fiery oven and a torch. So you will make them as a fiery oven. That's that dark rift. That's that womb that we're experiencing in the valley of the shadow of death. You will make them as a fiery oven in the time of your anger. The Lord will swallow them up in his wrath, and fire will devour them. Nahum 1, 5, 3, 6. Mountains quake because of him. And see, that's why I think that Nibiru is... Mountains quake because of him, and the hills dissolve. Indeed, the earth is upheaved by his presence. The world and all the inhabitants in it. Who can stand before his indignation? Who can endure the burning of his anger? His wrath is poured out like fire, and the rocks are broken up by him. The Lord is good, a stronghold, an ark in the day of trouble, and he knows those who take refuge in him. But with an overflowing flood, he will make a complete end of its sight and will pursue his enemies into the darkness, into the caves. Zephaniah 118, in the day of the Lord's wrath, and all the earth will be devoured in the fire of his jealousy. See, it's his love. He's baptizing the earth in fire. For he will make a complete end, indeed a terrifying one, of all the inhabitants of the earth. This is the sea of souls, guys, that just, they don't care. They're not choosing God. They're not choosing the devil. they just throwing their calling away. So therefore, God throws, uh, God brings the fire and destroys them because they've made their decision. And they refuse to get into the ark. Japan. The word Japan comes from Nahom, Nippon, and it means sun origin, which also alludes to something strange. How many people remember 1947, there was a UFO crash in Roswell? In the United States. Okay, well, it was. Well, back in um, last year, I think it was, there was this boy that was like, he got in big trouble. His dad uh, and him had this flying saucer uh, that they were, you know, playing around with, saying it was a flying saucer and all that. He got in big trouble, but it still came on the news. That's what God's looking for. He's trying to show things that come on the news. That was not far. It was the same longitude that happened at the same latitude that happened at, as the Roswell crash. And then up here is where Genesis NASA probed the crash site. That's where they were. NASA um, crashed there. Okay, look at this. In, in 1947, see the date is very interesting because what was the year that Israel became a nation? 1948. 1948, Israel became a nation. So in 1947, a UFO crashed in Roswell, New Mexico. Not a big deal, except for this fact, that Israel became a nation in 1948. See, that was the year when they became a nation. That was Jubilee. 
when they were freed to be able to get their land back. That's a, that is a definite jubilee. They got their land back, and they were free from, from British rule that was, that was ruling over their area and wouldn't let them have their own nation. So going back to the Roswell crash by the UFO, that's very interesting. I'm going to show you something. We find another pattern. God's been talking to me this week about four corners. He showed it to me in Ezekiel 7, and then I found this. This is right there with the crash site. See that? Roswell crash, balloon boy, Genesis. This is February 5th, April the 29th, November the 4th, and August the 14th. That's Utah, Colorado, Arizona, and New Mexico. And right here is where we are right now, the Serpent's Gate. That's where that dark rift is on our nation. It's hitting there. Well, this is interesting. All tied together by the same line that runs all the way to the Ring of Fire. All the way. That line is also the spring equinox. Remember I showed you if you take a circle and you put the pentagram on it, and that line right there is the same line that runs to the spring equinox. Something's going to happen, guys. I'm telling you, this is all about death and resurrection. God's making it extremely clear. The sons, the Christ, have died. We've been in Sheol. And the Jubilee is all about our resurrection. It's time. Ezekiel 7. An end. The end is coming on the four corners of the land. Now the end is upon you, and I will send my anger against you. I will judge you according to your ways and bring all your abominations upon you. Abominations always connected to the mark of the beast. For my eye will have no pity on you, nor will I spare you, but I will bring your ways upon you, and your abominations will be among you. That DNA. Then you will know that I am the Lord. See? Then! That's why he's telling me, you don't tell anybody anymore. I've had enough of them, you, me, th me throwing my pearls before them, and they're nothing but swine. Why swine? Because they have demon DNA. Ezekiel 7, 5 through 6, a disaster, a unique disaster. Behold, it's coming. An end is coming. The end has come. It has awakened. What did I tell you the sun has done? awakened against you behold it has come now i will shortly pour out my wrath on you and spend my anger against you judge you according to your ways and bring on you all your abominations my eye will show no pity nor will i spare i will repay you according to your ways while your abominations are in your midst then you will know that i the lord do the smiting Abominations are when you become immortal by the demons in your DNA. Behold the day. Behold it's coming. Your doom has gone forth. The rod has budded. Remember? God's rod, Ophiuchus. Arrogance has blossomed. Violence has grown into a rod of wickedness. None of them shall remain. None of their people. None of their wealth nor anything imminent among them. The time has come. The day has arrived. Let not the buyer rejoice, nor the seller mourn, for wrath is against all their multitude. Even when their survivors escape, they will be on the mountains like doves of the valley, all of them mourning, each over his own iniquity. They will fling, I love this part, their silver into the streets, and their gold will become an abhorred thing. Their silver and their gold will not be able to deliver them in the day of the wrath of the Lord. That's why we just go around and pick it up. <laughs> they transformed the beauty of his ornaments into pride, and they made the images of their abominations and their detestable things with it other gods. They took the gold and made it into their gods or whatever. Not necessarily, you know, we do the same thing with money. We take money, which is a God, and we buy things with it. Create more gods. I will also make the pride, the Amorites, of the strong ones cease. See, he's going to cut us off. And their holy places will be profaned. That's the DNA. 
When anguish comes, they will seek peace, but there will be none. Disaster will come upon disaster. See that? Disaster upon disaster. Are we not experiencing that today, guys? And rumor will be added to rumor. Then they will seek a vision from a prophet. <laughs> That's when they'll be coming through that door. Help! <laughs> the law will be lost, though. See? Gergeshite. It's coming off. From the priest... And the council from the elders, the king will mourn. The, pre, the prince will be clothed with horror, and the hands of the people of the land will tremble. According to their conduct, I will deal with them, and by their judgments, I will judge them, and they will know. How many times does he say that? Three times. That I am the Lord. Because they are trying to be immortal, they will be tortured and not able to die. Sheol is a place of purposelessness, guys. We've been wandering in the wilderness in a circle, going nowhere, around the same mountain. This is what God spoke to me when he put me on the path of obedience. You would not be here today if I had not made the choice to get off that mountain. Because that was the very first time that I obeyed God. He said to me, aren't you tired of going around the mountain? Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, get off. Start obeying me. Get off of this and get in line with me, Angie. A circle going nowhere around the same mountain. No thank you. Bearing the Moses generation's whoredoms. Remember this? Numbers 14, 33. And your children shall wander in the wilderness 40 years and bear your whoredoms until your carcasses be wasted in the wilderness. History has been a waiting period for previous generations because they choose to remain under the Gergeshite law and man's doctrines versus God's. Why? Because they won't seek truth. They'd rather just explain it. They'd rather just walk around in the wilderness and say, this is how it's supposed to be. We just live our lives and then we die. Oh, there's so much more. They would rather believe lies like the rapture, the evil report. They were supposed to subdue the giants in order to take the land. They wouldn't go up the mountain and be baptized with fire voluntarily. Therefore, their generation died in the wilderness. What in the wilderness is sun withered up, right? This generation has been chosen to defeat the giants and take the land back. It's Jubilee time, guys. John 4, 24. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and in truth. Spirit is code word for fire. Anytime you see spirit, put the word fire. Exodus 24, 17. And to the eyes of the sons of Israel, the appearance of the glory of the Lord was like a consuming fire on the mountaintop. Pyramid, Hebrew 12, 28 through 29. Our God is a consuming fire. And what is the job of the Holy Spirit? John 16, 13 through 15. But when he, the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. He will guide you if you'll just go with him. If you'll just get off the stinking mountain going around and around and around, going nowhere. If you'll just say, okay, that's scary, but I'll do it. Then you disconnect yourself from all those ites and you get on God's timetable. For he will not speak of his own initiative, but whatever he hears, he will speak and will disclose it to you what is to come. He will glorify me, Jesus, for he will take of mine and will disclose it to you. See, he was the first son, the first fruit, and he's going to give it to his sons. The only requirement is you've got to obey. God is creating a Joshua army that he alone has taught. And his wisdom is not of this world. This is one of my favorite passages right here. 1 Corinthians 2, 6 through 16. Yet we do speak wisdom among those who are mature, who can eat that meat. I don't want a stinking bottle anymore. 
those who are mature, a wisdom, however, not of this age, nor of the rulers of this age, who are passing away, Gergeshite. See that? But we speak God's wisdom in a mystery, the hidden wisdom which God predestined before the ages to our glory from the very beginning of time. It was right there. We were ready to go into the promised land right there. But Adam fell. And therefore time was created. Just like what happened with the children of Israel. They, it was 11 days. They were supposed to be able to go right into the promised land. But here we go again. Daniel, same thing. Right into the promised land. But here we go again. Aren't you tired? I'm tired of it. I know what he wants to do. But we speak God's wisdom in a mystery, the hidden wisdom which God predestined before the ages to our glory, the wisdom which none of the rulers of this age has understood. Amen? Moses' generation, they don't get it. They think we're big, fat meanies. Oh, and they'll, they'll get it one day. They're just poor things, you know. They just don't understand. How could they think that they could, she could possibly be a preacher? You know, she doesn't have a title. She doesn't have a position. But God bless her. She's trying. Yeah. <laughs> For if they had understood, if they had understood it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. Because who's the ones that crucified God? Jesus. The church did. But justice is written. Things which eye has not seen mm, and ear has not heard and which have not entered the heart of man, all that God has prepared for those who love him. For to us, God revealed them through the Spirit, through the fire. Who wants to go into the fire now? For the fire searches all things, even the depths of God. For who among men knows the thoughts of a man except the spirit of the man which is in him? Even so, the thoughts of God no one knows except the spirit of God. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, not this thing, but the spirit who is from God so that we might know the things freely given to us by God so that we can go into the promised land. Which things we also speak, not in words taught by human wisdom, but in those taught by the Spirit, combining spiritual thoughts with spiritual words. We get Sidonia, guys. Hyperdimensional. <laughs> See, the, the Sea of Souls gets that information blackout. But God's showing us how to move. They don't want us to be able to know about the spiritual realm. Because they want to rule and reign over us. Mm, God's so good. Combining spiritual thoughts with spiritual words, but a natural man does not accept the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him. And he cannot understand them because they are spiritually appraised. But he who is spiritual appraises all things, yet he himself is appraised by no one because you've died to the law. For who has known the mind of the Lord that he will instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. Spirit to spirit is DNA. Those that have been baptized with fire can know what their father is doing because you can have that same DNA. And you don't have to be connected to man's ways. Go ahead. Psalm 23. This is what God said to me this week. He said, go back to Psalm 23. I want to show you some connections. The Lord is my shepherd. What does the shepherd do? Leads us. I shall not want. Why? Because the Holy Spirit of God leads you into the wilderness to baptize you in fire where you don't follow man anymore so that you can only receive from him. He makes me lie down in green pastures. See, I was talking to Charlie this week. And it's weird. He felt it too. It's like I was pushing for so long, for so many years. Please, somebody, listen to me. Please, please listen to me. I'm not crazy. I know what I'm talking about. If you just give me 30 minutes, I can show you patterns. Please listen. That all stopped this week. 
It's like a rest. I actually went and bought makeup. I haven't had makeup in a while, you know. I, I don't buy myself makeup. I feel such a rest. It's, I mean, don't you see it? How I've been pushing and pushing. I really feel a rest. And this is why. It's because he leads me. I mean, he makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He causes me to rest. As I learn to meditate on him, Christ is formed in me, and I can rest. He restores my soul. That's the whole purpose, is he wants to clean it out and give me newness of life. He guides me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Name, DNA, holiness, so I can be one with him. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, every man, it's appointed for a man, wants to die. Every man has to walk through the valley of shadow of death, whether voluntarily, in shield, or baptized in fire, destruction. But you will walk through the valley of the shadow of death. And if you walk through it with God, perfect love casts out all fear. You will fear no evil because you'll know he's with you. Every man goes through the dark rift. Three days for Adam to die. Every man will die at least once. I have to walk through Sheol. I have to walk. You can't run through Sheol. Because Sheol is the place, if you're following Christ, that you have to go to bear the burdens of everybody. Because you have to experience exactly what Jesus did. Remember, you got saved. Woohoo! You got the life. And then those people go out and they start doing things with that life. And that's an Ishmael. You've got to take that life, that son of promise, and you've got to sow that. That's what God wants. He don't want your stinking broken marriage and your problem children. He wants a sacrifice. Something worthy of, of value to you. So therefore... When you agree to be a Christ, when you agree to be a son, when you want to be close to him and you want to be a son, you have to become a Christ and become an ark and carry people through. The sins, the sins of the world were upon Jesus. They also are going to be upon the Christ. When we go to somebody and we talk to them and we're, and we're trying to set them free, we have to fight their devils. But that's why we have to go through Sheol voluntarily we have to walk through shield because we're carrying heavy burdens but you know what i walk through i am going to come out i will resurrect your rod and your staff ophiuchus they comfort me see it's his rod ophiuchus is his rod they, they comfort me and the Lord loves those whom he chastens because the rod spanks the booty, doesn't it? He makes me an ark of safety for others. That's what it means. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Joshua said, he goes, guys, why are you so worried about them eating us? We're going to eat them. They're bread for us. We're going to get stronger by eating them. Don't be afraid. Of what we're fixing to experience. I don't have to fear darkness. Because I'm full of light. And darkness cannot touch you when you're full of light. You have anointed my head with oil. My cup overflows. See he baptizes you in the fiery anointing. And when he does. You are one. And you are so full of him. That you can't help but overflow to others. Because you're married to him. You're one with him. Surely goodness and loving kindness will follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell, dwell, tabernacle in the house of the Lord forever because I will have eternal life. Is God trying to tell those with eyes to see and ears to hear something? Are you convinced? Pursuing truth should be the goal, no matter what that means. He just wants you to see truth. He's doing everything he can to say, Wake up, people. These are not just coincidences. You are the one, though, 
that decides for yourself what truth is. You're the one that says you're coming to church on Saturday night, but yet you didn't show up for whatever reason. If you knew the world was going to be destroyed soon, I guarantee you your behind would be here, but they don't believe it. That's the problem. They don't believe it. They don't believe there's a flood coming. Just like Noah, he preached for 120 years. There's a flood coming. Yeah, whatever, Noah. They have to decide for themselves what truth is. What it is and what it isn't. And guys, there's only one plumb line of truth. There are no half-truths. And half-truths are not truth and therefore have no power. You are not a son of the church. You're called to be a son of God. God is not the church. He wants to live in you, not in man's temples. You must put down your ego that is offended that you haven't believed the truth for all these years. Yeah, you've been fed garbage, and you've believed it. I had to overcome that too. God's like, I want to show you the truth, but you're going to have to let go of everything else you believe. Or you're not going to be able to accept it. And it was hard for me. Guys, you guys are following me. Do you know how difficult? I have really fought the devil this week about that. He's like, these people are following you and you don't know where you're going. <laughs> oh my God. I am so vulnerable. <laughs> I am so vulnerable. But I know I'm going the right way. Based on the patterns. Not only in the Bible, but in our world. Follow me as I follow him. That's what Paul said. Because I have put down my ego. I was offended that I didn't have the truth. But I was willing to let go of that bunk. So that I could understand what God was trying to tell me all this time. He circumcised me. You must repent upon hearing truth. And align yourself with God's real plumb line. That's the message of the Elijahs, the John the Baptist. Or you will not be in the ark. It's all up to you what you call truth. For me, I'm convinced. I mean, it's hard, guys, because I see the events unfolding. I know that there's a window that's open right now from, from now until April the 22nd because that's resurrection all that time. There's either two earthquakes or there's one big earthquake or there's a flood. There's something that's going to happen in that window from now until April the 22nd because of the patterns. That's how I know. I just know it because God moves in patterns. And if I don't believe this, I don't believe in God. I'm just like the rest of the people that's going, time is just going to go on. So guys, I, I'm vulnerable. I believe it. <laughs> and I brought it to you to show it to you because I believe God's speaking. I believe he's telling us. I believe tomorrow is going to be a different day. The four corners. I don't know if that's just in the United States. Which, you know, like I told you before, the United States is a Gergeshite to the rest of the world because we have the monetary system. All the Gergeshites are coming off. So, huh? Yeah. So we can be set free. I rejoice. I mean, it's a horrible, horrible thing. But we've talked to people until we're blue in the face. And we've told them, get in the ark. It's so simple. All you got to do is just believe me. Ah, well, I got, my kids have got this going on that night. And I don't, I just, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> None of that is important. But see, that's, that's what they're focused on. That's what they call truth. Their eyes are on this wandering in the wilderness. And they won't get it. So, Father, 
I'm vulnerable. I'm one of the crazy ones that believe you. I can't help but believe you. Every day before my feet even hit the floor, you're telling me, go look at this, go look at that. And you're connecting more and more and more with the Bible and my world. I'd be a fool not to believe. That's what faith is, Lord. I've put my seed in the ground and I've watered it and I expect it to come up. I expect it to, Lord, and I've preached it. I've taught it. But we all have to decide for ourselves what is truth. And that's how we live our life, based on what we think is truth. You can only follow somebody for a little while, believing what they believe, without believing it yourself. You've got to start believing it yourself. Or you're just, you're just not. You're not going to keep following. And so, Lord, I've, I've preached your message. And, Father, I pray for the people. I pray, Father, that you would give visions and dreams all the way up until the time that you tell us to get into the ark and you close the door. Father, if you want us to speak to anybody, I'm willing, Lord. We're all willing. We're red horses, Lord. We're willing to take the sword to the soul. Father, you show us. We don't want to do anything without you showing us, Lord. You are so good. You strike, but then you will heal. I want everybody to say with me, Thy kingdom come. Say it with me. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. Thy will be done. On earth as it is in heaven. That's our prayer, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen.